Tonight, 5 million Gmail usernames and passwords are posted on a Russian website should you panic. Plus, T-Mobile's big push for Wi-Fi cell phone calls and Macworld Magazine is shutting down. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 169 for Wednesday, September 10th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Well, this one is potentially alarming. Russian website CNews reported yesterday that around 4.93 million Gmail usernames and passwords were published to a Russian Bitcoin forum. But Google tells the Next Web that it doesn't believe this is a result of a security breach. Since the posting, the Bitcoin forum administrators have purged the passwords from that text file, leaving just the logins. But the forum user who published the file claimed that about 60% of the passwords were valid. Now, the text file showed mainly English and Spanish and Russian accounts, but also included some older lists that seemed to be accumulated over time, which could be unrelated to Gmail or even other Google services. So the leak potentially isn't affecting anywhere close to 5 million users. However, if you haven't enabled two-step verification, now is the time. Yesterday on stage at its iPhone Apple Watch event, Apple's Tim, uh, CEO Tim Cook talked about how the company planned to include Wi-Fi phone calls into the latest iPhone. At its Uncarrier 7.0 event today, T-Mobile announced that it's broadening its Wi-Fi calling and text message feature with a program called Wi-Fi Unleashed to get more of its customers on smartphones that can make calls and send texts over Wi-Fi. T-Mobile also said it would start offering customized free Wi-Fi routers to maximize speeds of its smartphones, and that the company also signed a deal with GoGo in-flight Wi-Fi service to offer free texting and photo messages and visual voicemail in the air on any U.S.-based airline that GoGo works with. Back in July, T-Mobile launched its voice over LTE network across the U.S., which is only compatible on specific smartphones, but do include the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. And good news for T-Mobile customers that are traveling, compatible phones will be able to make calls back to the U.S. over Wi-Fi for free. GeekOnGadget.com is reporting that it received a confidential internal document from within Microsoft. It says Microsoft will be completely dropping the Nokia branding from its devices, leaving Lumia as the brand for upcoming devices, and that the Lumia 830 and Lumia 730 will be the final two devices to launch with that Nokia branding. Geek on Gadget says that the document also points to Microsoft phasing out the Windows Phone logo next to devices in promotions and advertisements, opting instead for the Windows logo, the standard one, as a gradual retirement of the Windows Phone name and the OS, which will merge with a desktop version of Windows in upcoming updates. Twitter's announced a new developer conference focused on mobile called, appropriately, Flight. The conference will take place at the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium in San Francisco on October 22nd. It'll include a keynote from Twitter CEO Dick Costolo and technical sessions for mobile devs to build on Twitter's platform. You might remember Chirp. That was the official Twitter developer conference that took place back in 2010. But it never had a follow-up, and as Twitter's business strategy has evolved, its relationship with developers hasn't always been harmonious. In fact, just last week we reported that TwitPic announced that it would be shutting down due to a trademark dispute with Twitter. Twitter also said that it's rolled out a newly revamped developer site, so perhaps it's a new dawn for relationships with third-party services. Facebook is testing a new feature that will let you schedule a post for deletion at some point in the future after you post it. Weird, right? Several users have already reported seeing an option to choose expiration on their Facebook posts. It isn't the first time that Facebook has experimented with ephemeral messaging. Back in June, it released a Snapchat clone app called Slingshot that allowed users to sling back and forth photos and videos that then expire. But what kind of posts do people want automatically deleted from Facebook itself? events, article links. It seems to me like the opposite of what Facebook has always wanted. 
So it's a new dawn for Facebook as well. One question that came out of Apple's Apple Watch reveal at its event yesterday, at least from a few of us, South Paws, is does the watch work the same way on either wrist? Left-handed people really care about things like this. Apple tells Slash Gear that on initial setup, you can choose to have the watch face orient itself for use on the right wrist. The watch bands are also swappable, so your band won't be facing the wrong way. However, lefties still have to deal with a right-handed design somewhat because the digital crown will be on the bottom left-hand side of the watch when worn on the right wrist. I don't know, not a deal breaker for me, but I don't know, it depends. Coming up, is your drone caught in a tree? We will tell you who to call, and it isn't the Ghostbusters. And up next, I'll ch chat with Seth Weintraub from 9 to 5 Mac about the end of Macworld Magazine and truly an era. But first, we want to talk about a free and secure tool called Personal Capital that solves two barriers to growing your wealth. You want to be wealthy, right? Of course you do. So you have to keep track of your, the stocks that you might have shares in or your 401k, or maybe they're multiple ones might have different bank accounts. You got a checking, you got a saving. There might be different sites and usernames and passwords. It can be kind of confusing. Well, so what do you do? You get a money manager and then you pay that money manager a certain amount of money and maybe you're paying too much. Personal Capital brings all of your accounts and assets onto a single screen on your computer, your phone or your tablet with real time and intuitive graphs. Personal Capital has a watch app. <laughs> not, it's not the Apple Watch. It's a different kind of watch that you can download in Google Play that integrates on Personal Capital on other Android devices and provides users with timely updates on their finances whenever they need it. Personal Capital shows how much you're overpaying in fees. That actually happened to me recently. I was paying like hundreds of dollars a month on old 401ks that I don't even contribute to anymore. That's silly. You want to reduce those fees. Personal Capital can help you with that too. Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay back big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions. To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. It's free and it's the smart way to grow your money. Thanks to Personal Capital for the support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Seth Weintraub from 925Mac on his inaugural visit to TN2. Welcome, Seth. Thank you for having me. So this is an interesting, it's just really, really a sign of the times that IDG, which is the parent publishing company of Macworld, has decided to shut down Macworld magazine and let most of the editorial staff go. How many staffers are we talking about? Um, I know it's at least five writers and editors and probably a few more. Um, from the, I mean, it's all the people I know at uh, Macworld, I think only two are still there and at least five are gone. So, you know, IDG hasn't been very public with the, this whole situation. Now, Macworld.com continues, but clearly will be running with fewer staff. They, IDG didn't see the, a reason to keep all of the same people to run the, the digital version of the magazine. I mean, the Macworld brand has changed so much over the years. Even, uh, you know, Macworld, the event which takes place in January used to be uh, something that Apple was participating in. What was it? Five years ago or so, maybe even more Apple decided it didn't really want to be part of it. And it's really a shell of what it used to be. What do you think will happen to Macworld.com, the site? Um, it sounds like it's moving to more of an aggregation uh, model. I know they're keeping some staffers on and I think, um, you know, there's, it costs a lot less money to just aggregate content and they, and they have stuff coming from computer world and PC world and, and tech hive and, and all these other IDG sites that, um, can pull in. I, I personally used to, to work at computer world and, and they'd always pull my, my, uh, stories over to Macworld. So, you know, there's still a lot of content out there for them. It just won't be the people that, uh, readers like me are familiar with and, and know pretty well. I know, I know a few people are still going to be there that you'll remember, but for the most part, the big names are all gone. I mean, you work, you, 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 you work for nine to five. Mac, you obviously know that there's a, there, there's a huge audience of people who want specifically Mac related stories. They want breaking stories. They want to read everything, uh, you know, Mac related. What happened with Mac world? Was it just long in the tooth? Did it need some rebranding? Was Is this just an inevitable uh, evolution of the kinds of tech blogs that people read? Well, I, th I mean, the paper is gone, or the, the magazine, the actual physical magazine. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, 
I think the idea was that they're going to strip it down um, to to more of a, a blog, you know, just make it uh, freelancers writing quick uh, stories and, and not necessarily doing much, uh, you know, the typical journalism. Um, so I, I don't think it's necessarily that they plan to give up the the the, the brand. The brand, I think totally, they, yeah. I think they wanted to kind of ditch the paper version and make things a lot cheaper. So from somebody who, you said you used to write for Computer World, is that right? That's right. From somebody who obviously kind of comes from this world and, and understands uh, how uh, publishing has become a lot more nimble, does it surprise you that something like Macworld, the magazine, has been printed all of this time? Yeah, it does a little bit. I, Computer World actually was printing until, I think, earlier this year, late last year. Um, and, and, you know, obviously fewer and fewer people were reading it and nobody really wanted it because everything they want is on the web immediately. Um, they don't have something to throw away. So, you know, it's not really surprising that the paper's gone. What's surprising to me, um, is that they cut all the staff, um, you know, the, the big names in the staff so that, you know, it, it sounds to me that like somebody way up high made a decision that, Hey, we're going to cut the paper version and we're going to, you know, decimate the, the, the amount of pay we're allowed, we're, we're putting it into editorial. So all these big names have to go. We're going to hire some freelancers um, and we're going to get some content, let, you know, significantly less, exp more, more cheaply, I guess. Any of those big names coming to nine to five Mac anytime soon? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we have like, we have, I think, 15 people now on the roster. So we're, I mean, we're, You're we're pretty growing. good at breaking news. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, for sure. Um, the, the type of writers that, uh, you know, that write for, for magazines are a little bit, um, different. Um, we, you know, we're, we're pretty quick with our news. We try to be, uh, a little bit more succinct and, uh, you know, it's just a different type of writing, I guess. 9 to 5 Mac, Seth Weintraub obviously writes for 9 to 5 Mac. And let folks know where they can keep up with more of your work online. Well, obviously 9 to 5 Mac, 9 to 5 Google. Um, and I'm on Twitter at LLSethJ, which is a legacy holdout from the 80s. It's good stuff. Got to keep that holdout. Like magazines, right. really. Thanks so much for joining us, Seth. Thanks for having me. All right. Finally, here's a weird San Francisco story. In case you didn't think that San Francisco was weird enough, you might now. The San Francisco local fire department's lists of provided services now includes drone rescue. Yes, drone enthusiast Eddie Codell, and actually a friend of mine, published a photo on Twitter back in July showing a team of five firefighters working together to get a drone out of a tree. Local news publication SFist notes that San Franciscans increasingly are losing drones due to what's known as flyaways, a popular term for drones that stop responding to commands and declare temporary independence. So... Call your local fire department, everybody. They can't possibly have anything better to do, what with California being in a drought and all. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. It's a really good way to get the show delivered to you every day if you're not watching live. And for those of you watching live, hello. And write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.